May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Cute Audio Podcast. I'm D.C. Puba of Cute Audio and Cute Archives, preserving the legacy of Shunju Suzuki and those whose paths crossed his, and anything else that comes to mind. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. Today we have a guest, Tim Ford, who was a student of Shunju Suzuki. Very likable guy, sort of down-to-earth, matter-of-fact guy, you'll hear. And um, he went on to become a contractor, 40 years. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm spoiling it. I'm giving it all away. Don't need to tell you anymore. I want to get right into it. You know why? Because I want to get to bed. And uh, so, right after our pause to meditate, we're going to go give Tim a call. So when you hear the bell, if you wish, hit pause and meditate or whatever for as long as you wish. And when you're through, hit unpause And then we'll be there waiting for you. And we'll hit the bell to end the meditation or whatever. And we'll go right into talking to Tim. David. Tim. <laughs> How you doing? Oh, you're good. It's five o'clock in the morning there. Yeah, what is it here? It's four four forty-four. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the very, very unusual. And okay. okay. And the second time this week. But extremely rare. The first time was because of the uh, uh, inauguration. And yeah, that was the day of the inauguration, and was the last day I could make change changes on two books. Uh, so I didn't get to bed till six fifteen that morning. Okay, that counts. Yeah. Wow. Hey. So, um, uh, listen. I want to record this and make a podcast out of it. All right. Okay. Good. Thanks. Um, so, uh, <laughs> um, so what, what, what are you up to these days? Oh, uh, basically, um, looking at Twitter and following, uh, the horrors that have gone down here in the last four years. Yeah. <laughs> following that, <laughs> sitting in front of that, um, I stopped working about, um, no, oh, about three years ago, uh-huh. I was living in uh, Social Security after 40 years of contracting. <laughs> Pretty um, good. Yeah. And um, what else am I doing? Um, I have a girlfriend in Santa Rosa, and I go up there every weekend. Cool. 
Cool. Where in Santa Rosa? It's over by the uh, old cemetery. Mm hmm. Mendocino Avenue. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, you know, I used, I, know. I used, I lived there for years, but there's no. Oh yeah. Well, very good. I like Santa Rosa. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a valley town, and it's um, uh, it's just post agricultural, but it still has that, that feeling. You know, they drive around in uh, hot rods and um, yeah, things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I lived outside of town on Bennett Valley Road, right at the oh top, yeah, right at the top, right where it meets Ken Crane Canyon Road with uh, John Tarrant. You know, uh, the Zen teacher. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I think I saw him once at uh, Norman's. Um, what mountain seed ceremony or something? Huh. huh. Yeah. Yeah. He took the he took the whisk away from Norman and danced around with it. <laughs> My gosh, really? Uh, all right. Um, that's funny. Uh, well, he, I'm sure he and Norman get along very well. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, so uh, Berkeley, yeah, I like Berkeley too. Well, uh, forty years contract, you must have pretty good Social Security. Uh, yeah, well, that's good. Well, um, uh, what, what, uh, where, where were you born? Oh. Okay, I was born in Englewood, New Jersey, and then I took the train <laughs> to um, <laughs> the ranch ranch out here, uh, the fir our first ranch, my family ranch, uh, which is now where the town of Pleasant Hill is. Oh. Um, yeah, we had 160 acres, and I lived there till I was 10, then we moved to an 800-acre ranch up by Grass Valley. Oh, Lived there for a few years. Ah. Ah. Yep. And, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, what's your uh, weight seeking mind story? You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Uh, my Zazen history is, um, well, it was Dharma Bombs, Jack Kerouac's book, but I, discovered in the library and which changed everything and then uh walking down hollywood boulevard i went to the bookstore and there and there was missing text by gary snyder and that changed it even more uh. Uh, but there was no there was no teacher then in la um so uh, but then what year? In 60. Uh, this would have been 1960. Uh huh. 61. And uh -huh. I experiment with sitting, just like trying to do something out of Jack Kerouac's book. But um, I didn't really start uh, seriously trying to sit until 67 when I was sitting by myself and then. In June of 68, I came up um, to Zen Center. Hmm. And um, where'd you hear of just it? Just before, uh, someone had gotten a hold of uh, my friends of uh, the Windbell, and they were talking about it. Uh huh. And um, they gave me a subscription to the Windbell or something. <laughs> so I was going to do something like that after all the um, after the LSD years in the '60s uh -huh. and the the Ed Ashbury thing in the early '60s, the Diggers, Ed Ashbury. Were you involved in any of that? Well, I was there, and I I knew the the people like um, 
the diggers. I had a friend who was in the in the diggers, Robert Lamorticella. Uh huh. He did the puppet did the puppets, and I uh, went to the first acid test, at Longshore oh. Auditorium with Kesey. Uh huh. Kesey was there. Neil Cassidy and the Hell's Angels were <laughs> standing around. It's a lot of people. Um, and where was that? Anyway, I came to um, where where was it? Zen Center in where? just before Reb drove up in his uh, Cadillac hearse. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Ah. So what happened? So, but, uh, I left um, Page Street. I lived down the street from Page Street, but left there and. Um, Uh, seventy-two or three, and build a house out in Forest Knolls. Uh, Silas was living there in yeah. Forest Knolls too at the time. Yeah. Um, I remember that. I'd forgotten about that, but I remember that. Now I think I was there. I think I saw it. You, you, you might have been. I borrowed some little bit of money from Mark Grant uh -huh. to help me. Well, that's nice. Yeah, Neil uh, did a little work on it for me. Oh. On the house. Oh. That's that's great. I used to go out there and see Silas where he was li he w he was living in Forest Knowles, huh? Right, yeah, he had a place which was on the other side of Forest Knoll. Um, and uh, I used to uh, go visit him. He got and he'd be out there without a shirt on, with bees crawling all over him, uh, uh, <laughs> working with really working with his bees. And yeah. um, he was very hairy. Uh, and, <laughs> I think he was, yeah. He was. And, you know, uh, that's interesting because, like, if, if a bee or wasp, this is my understanding, I have, I have a friend who would catch them with his hand. I said, oh, my God, how can you do that? He said, well, they won't sting you on your hand. They, they sting you where you've got air. I went, come on. I don't, I still, I don't know if that's true. But that just, I probably haven't thought of that since then, but I just thought of how hairy uh, a back and, and chest Silas had with all those bees. <laughs> um, Finding a home there. Yeah, but he was comfortable yeah. with bees. Yeah. 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 Um, so you came in 68, and uh, uh, so... Uh, how did that, what What was your first experience there at Zen Center? How was that? Well, yeah, I remember I came up for a half day sitting and drove up from Santa Barbara for a half day sitting yeah. and uh, experienced that. And then um, a couple months later, I moved up and then we lived in a, we, a communal house on Pine Street. Um, let's see, with Margaret, Steve Weintraub. And oh. Some other people. Oh yeah, yeah. There for about a year. I think Steve was twenty-one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Margaret said she talked about it. She said that he organized the house. Uh, uh, right. And and she and, we, and Maggie, she was chaotic. Yeah, Maggie. <laughs> Yeah, I used to stay with her in in Taos and Santa Fe. Uh, yeah, and the thought of her and and wine tribe together is humorous. Uh, <laughs> I I get along really well with him. I really respect him a lot, but I I pity him. Yeah, I do too. So I, yeah, I I pity him for what he had to go through with me, uh, because. Yes. He and I are opposite, opposite. Uh, also. And um, when, when I'd been living at 
Tassahara for most of the time for like five years when Suzuki Roshi died. And then I came to this city to be uh, the work leader, and he was the director. And <laughs> the, so that's uh, for a whole year, right? It worked out all right. Yeah. And then uh, the and, and that was a very wild year for me. Uh, uh, after five years at Tazahara, <laughs> and um, uh, then the next year I went to Green Gulch and was work leader, and he was director. <laughs> and I remember one day at Green Gulch we were talking about stuff, and he looked at me and said, "David, you know, the problem we have is." I don't want anything to be an exception, <laughs> and you want everything to be an exception. <laughs> I think that's extremely succinct on his part. Yeah, he's, he is. He is. Um, I I just uh, went to a memorial service for Mel with the Occidental, uh, with the the, the back porch. Zendo that Ken Sawyer and Elizabeth Sawyer have. And, you know, it's a Zoom thing. And they're very, very close old friends. So I went to that. And yeah. Steve officiated very minimally. I really liked it, you know. Uh, yeah. um, and it was fun. It was <laughs> a bunch of old friends. Um, so, um, uh, do you remember uh, the first time you met uh, Suzuki Roshi or how how that was? Or? Uh, well, I I had uh, Dokusan with him a couple of times, and um, I think that um, that. Uh, It was uh, so simple. <laughs> mm -hmm. he, he just, uh, I, I remember, I think it was um, the August session in 69, and uh, there was Suzuki Roshi, Katagiri, and Taisan. What? Uh, yep. Yeah. Edo Shimano? Yeah, Ido Tai Shimano, I guess that's what his name is. <laughs> the story. So there wasn't a room in the Zendo for everybody. So I was sitting out, and we were all sitting in the balcony you know, where the pigeons roost right on the other side of your head. Yeah. Uh, outside. And uh, I would uh, put my hands in the classic posture i've for, forgotten what the name of it is you know you're raised up off your lap yeah it's just your mood and then uh Tyson would come by and move my hands down into my lap then category would come by a little later and raise my hands up oh that is funny this, this is shocking to me tyson was there Edo was there i mean I had, yeah, and he... Uh, he's Rinzai. He, uh, he's Rinzai, and he was super Rinzai. I, know, I mean, not, his own trip was just completely opposite. But he revered Ru Suzuki. I, I know, because I have an interview with him and visited him in New York and talked about it. Wow. Go on. That's amazing. I had no idea. He was there the whole week? Yeah. The whole session? Yeah, yeah, and, and he... Um, he gave a lecture or something. I remember he was standing up, and he, he burst into Man of La Mancha. Oh, I've Quite heard... the impossible dream. Oh. Oh. I thought, okay, so this is Rinvai. Yeah, I've heard of that. I've heard it. I didn't know where that happened. You know? Yeah. You know, I've been yeah. interviewing people and talking to people for since the mid-'90s. Even the the early nineties about their experiences at Zen Center and stuff. And that's this is the first time I've realized that Tyson 
was at that session because, uh, and, and that's about a month after uh, Trudy Dixon died, August. Yeah. I could be wrong, David, but I think that was it because uh, I don't think it was a Sunday lecture. Uh -huh. wow. But anyway, that's. Anyway, he was at that session. <laughs> I never wow. forget the category Tyson struggle. That that's Violent. funny. That's that's really that's <laughs> great. Uh great image. Uh yeah. Yeah. Um so uh so when, in, in, Yeah. Anyway, uh, a bunch of us went into the carpenters union. It was a big thing to do. Bob Halperin became um an iron worker probably mm -hmm. for a month. Mm -hmm. Ron Browning uh, was there and uh, doing that. Mm -mm, and uh, mm -mm, mm -mm. Clark Mason. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Not in 69. Not in 69. Ron Browning went to Japan in 68. Yeah, he was, uh, he was back. Because I asked him what he ate for lunch as an iron worker because he was certainly the least iron worker person mm -hmm. I'd ever seen. He was a really oh, nice guy. You're right. And, he didn't uh, last long in Japan. Oh, this is, I, I had no idea. I didn't even know he'd come back to Zen Center. You're telling me yeah, all these he new said things. He ate, a rice, he ate rice and a pear. And, of course, um, macrobiotics was being pushed heavily by... Um, um, uh, I blanked out his name. Loring. Loring, right. Loring. <laughs> Loring Palmer. Yeah, Loring. But uh, and the last time I saw Ron Browning, um, he was just standing outside of Page Street, and he said he was that was it. He was going back to Texas or something, and I said, "What well, you were ordained as?" A priest, something to that effect, and he said he went to Suzuki Roshi and said he didn't want to be a priest anymore. And Suzuki Roshi said, "Well, you you know you can't do that." And then so Ron went back and, and burned his robes. I I, I knew he, he went burned to his Suzuki robes. Roshi. I didn't know this story though. Yeah, and then he said Suzuki Roshi told him, "Okay, you're no longer a priest." <laughs> Far out, far out. Uh, well, I've you know, I've I've interviewed Ron. Oh God, I don't know, fifteen years ago or something, or ten years ago, because he he was living in uh, he was living. Uh, it's hard to say where. Off, uh, I think it's Green Valley Road or something in uh, Sonoma County, uh, sort of near uh, near Occidental, but it's. It's uh, uh -huh. a little remote, and uh, he got he got after Zen Center. He got heavily into Est, very heavily into Est, uh, uh -oh. and uh, uh, and then he got into uh, Vipassana and Theravada Buddhism, which he was much more comfortable with because he was he was always uncomfortable with the uh, looseness with rules and everything in Zen. Uh, to to the extreme, he really liked the vipassana and and also he had he had uh, you know he mellowed as he got older, but he's he's got a he he had a, a little vipassana center at his home you know they do retreats, and uh, he would no. have uh, you know I guess Burmese teachers there, you know he has persevered and. Uh, uh, been a, a, a tr he's a true seeker, man. That that guy, that guy uh, never let up. <laughs> um, yeah. So, right. <laughs> I, you know, I remember okay. you real well from back there at Zen Center, but I can't remember what. And also, I would see you sometimes afterwards. I can remember you visiting me in Bolinas. Right, yeah. 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 I, I remember. Yeah. And, uh, I gave you something. I remember that. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I remember that. Yeah, I, I can't remember 
<laughs> which something it was for sure. Uh, okay. Uh, but and you can talk about it. I don't hide anything. Well, that's true. You're the one person probably um, in the world. <laughs> don't hide anything. Uh, yeah, I remember you were living out there with Liz. Yeah. Well, um, that right. That was her name. Right, yeah. right. Liz Twomey. She had been Liz Okamura. R- right. 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 Um, yeah, well, after I didn't realize Ron was like that, only met him a few times, but mm-hmm. um, didn't realize he was a, extreme. But a- an um, iron worker, that just totally blows my mind. I had no, I, mean, I couldn't imagine, like you said, the last person. I, I, yeah, right. <laughs> also, I was the last person, I lasted about a week. And then everybody was going to the Carpenters Union, so I went in that, and that's um, in San Francisco. And that Carpenters. stuck. That stuck. Right. I was a union, and uh, turned out as an apprentice, and then um, uh, moved to Marin and built that house. Lived there for five years with my second wife. Your first uh, wife was, was Betsy? Correct. Yeah, that was Betsy. Uh huh. She's. Uh, How's she doing? Uh, she's uh, obviously pretty tough. She's a schizophrenic, and um, she was back then too. Yeah, she's uh, still schizophrenic. Uh, she right now she she had a um, pretty serious stroke she can't talk oh. and she's pretty bodily immobile and she's been in a nursing home oh. um, for the past uh, year and uh, she can say a couple of words and kind of recognize mm. as emotion but then uh, if there's COVID in the nursing home and they thought she had it and then I think she did have it, but she's gotten over it, and she's <laughs> still going. Amazing. Oh, that's Amazing. something. That's something. Yeah. Well, the yeah. nursing homes are some high percentage of COVID deaths in America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure does have a high percentage. Oh. Mm, well, right. that's sad. Second wife. Did I know your second wife? Who was that? That was Anne, and uh, we were together about 15 years. We split up about 30 years ago. Uh-huh. Like <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm not laughing that you split up. I'm just laughing at the years. <laughs> when you said we were together 15 years, and we split up 30 years ago. Wow. Yeah, it's get, getting on there now. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? Um, seventy-nine. Oh, whoa! You must be close to that. I'm seventy-five. Ah, uh, you? Yeah. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna be young forever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um. <laughs> yeah, you might. You might be. Uh, let's see, back to Suzuki Roshi, if we. Good yeah. for a minute. Um, yeah, in that first uh, session in the 69, um, I started, when I was sitting, I started shaking. I could feel the shaking in my whole body. Oh, really? So, huh. Doka San with Suzuki Roshi. I told this story at the gathering um, that they had at like some building, Stanford or something, and everybody showed up. You were undoubtedly there. Oh, yeah. 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 1999, uh, Stanford uh, Zen Center, uh, Shunyu Suzuki Conference, something like that. And, right. Uh, put on also by the, by the, uh, uh, oh, God, the, 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 the group that uh, Gil Fronsdale started. Uh, mm, 
I can't, can't remember. Right. That, that was the connection, I think, everything for him. Yeah. And that. But anyway, the story was that I heard that Suzuki Roshi, I was shaking all over. <laughs> and he said, hmm, hmm. I was sure this was something. And he, he went, hmm, I think that's the first time you really concentrated. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. Ah. That's funny. Um. That never happened to me, uh, except the last Vipassana retreat I did. Just toward the last 10 minutes of many, many of the periods, I would just start rattling. And it wasn't unpleasant or anything. I liked it. And uh, um, I had... uh, yeah, and and uh, my I very very seldom have any back problems, but during that retreat, my I had my back sort of go out. I could keep sitting and walk. I was fine when I was sitting. I had a little trouble, but I kept walking. And you know, hour of walking, hour of sitting, kept doing that. But I had to be real careful. But I loved it when it, when when I'd shake, and um, it would just it would just it would just throw my back down uh i mean sometimes it got but it, it, it wasn't going to the sides you know it was like up and down and it was sort of pleasant um but i didn't do it i mean it just would come all over me um i was yeah. sorry i was sorry when it went away right it was it was a, just a pleasant sensation didn't have anything to do with real and my, my my part was real concentration, so, uh-huh. <laughs> so it, was, it was pretty funny. I had Dokus on one more time with Suki Roshi, where Yvonne said, "Well, you just go in and you can talk with Suki Roshi. It's not like a formal thing, but <laughs> it's no <laughs> different. And, There's no difference." I told him that uh, right, exactly. Uh, I told him that. Um, yeah, I would get some warmth in my abdomen, and he said, "That's good. You're lucky." Yeah. He said you should keep your mind there always. Yeah. When you're sitting in your car, when you're sitting in your car, dot dot dot. Ha ha. And the other thing that I think of often, actually, almost every time I sit, is that during some lecture at Sakoji, Sakiroshi said during the lecture, is he said, you have to make some effort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's it <laughs> for me right there. You, yeah, you have to make some effort when you sit. You just can't sit there. And, of course, I've been trying to do that for the last 50 years, but... Good for not you. Very, Good for you. Not very, not successful. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, no. This is the, um, the the business we're in is one of being uh, unsuccessful. Um, <laughs> listen, they, they all feel unsuccessful. He did. You oh know? yeah, yeah, right. I remember Jerry Jerry Fuller when somebody asked him, um, Jerry, did you? Zazen this morning was there, and he said, "Yep, yeah, I tried again this morning." (laughs) 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 Exactly right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, Hmm. Hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, And the last time. Last time I saw Suzuki Roshi was in his coffin in the hallway there in front of the Buddha Hall in Page Street, and Dick was standing there, uh-huh. and he was he was just staring. staring. What was he staring at? He was he wasn't staring at Suzuki Roshi. He was just standing there and staring into 
space or something. And, and unfocused, an unfocused stare, maybe? Yeah, right. Um, unfocused hmm. stare, that's a good way to put it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, well, good Lord, look what the, was, was uh, uh, coming down on his shoulders. Uh, so I, <laughs> Suzuki cried, telling him, you know, I, I hate to think, you know, uh, what I, I'm sorry about what I'm doing to you now. Um, you know, Dick, Dick was sort of feeling his oats in Japan. He wasn't. He, he, he wasn't interested in coming back to America at that time. But um, I, I did a podcast uh, with uh, a guy who's just a super character, uh, uh, David um, Kubiak, who uh, was running a really cool bar in, in uh, Kyoto when Dick was living there. And he said... Um, uh, and Kubiak said that to him, Dick was the coolest guy, you know. He was like the epitome to him of what a Zen person was. He he uh, uh, was, you know, dressed in black, and he had like a beard, and uh, he was full of life, and, you know, there was, you know, there was a lot happening, and he was also involved at Daitokuji and different things. And then... David uh, visited him at Green Gulch years later and uh, went, wow, you've become an Episcopalian. Look what you, Now you've got Episcopalian sin. What, what's happened to you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but, you know, he had a lot of responsibility and so he uh, changed uh, direction when he came back. Um, yeah, I I'm in touch with him quite a bit. Uh, right, you 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 were uh, you always liked it. Of course, you like everybody in a way. <laughs> That's mean, true. You're, you're someone who you could, you could be friends with anybody. It's just amazing. Yeah, I have no I have no standards. <laughs> the only person who re- only person who really reminded me of Janice. Wow, Scotland. really? You. Janice was this person who was in your face. You, did you know her? I met her before she became. Well, I met her a couple of times. They're all part of the same methadrine shooting crowd. Oh, <clears throat> horrors. Uh, go on. <laughs> I remember telling Betsy, uh, stay away from that woman. One with the acne, wearing a muumu, and was loud. <laughs> um, wow, um, that, that's him. But she was from Texas. Um, there sure a, was a guy from Fort Worth. Remember the Avalon Ballroom? I, yeah, I'm I'm from Fort Worth, and Avalon was started by Chad Helms, who's from Fort Worth. And through oh, yeah. the years. I know that. So many people wanted me to meet him, and yeah. I just never did. And uh, then he died, and I, I think I was getting close to meeting him. Then he had like a, he might have had like an antique store or something down near Chinatown in San Francisco, Grant or something. I don't know, but I had a friend that was pretty close with him, and I had friends in Fort Worth who knew him. There was a. And I just never did. But he brought Janis Joplin out. Yeah, you know, um, uh, Marty Ballin, remember the lead singer for the yeah. Air, Jefferson Airplane, who, who uh, came to Tassar in 67, went back years later and, and helped uh, build something there with a, a friend, really? a guy named Gene DeSchmidt, if you ever happened to meet him. Uh, as a friend of Marty's. And uh, anyway, uh, he already owned a, a place called, um, I think it was called the Both And. No, it was called the Matrix. Marty's place was yeah. called the Matrix. Uh, and uh, 
anyway, I went there one night and uh, I heard this band and they were just unbelievable. And that was Janis Joplin with Big Brother and the Holding Company, this little place. It was yeah. so cool. I was really yeah. impressed with them and with her. Uh, Dude, wow, you, you guys would have made an incredible pair. <laughs> uh, uh, well, you know, I got involved. That, that I got involved with Zen Center, you know, within half a year of when I came to San Francisco and um wasn't long before I was at Tassahara, so my my wild well, I stayed wild, but uh but you know, going to Tassahara is what Suzuki called. Uh, he said, uh, you gotta put it's you gotta put a snake in a bamboo tube. Uh, so Tassara was my bamboo tube. Zen Center was Zen is meditation is still is. Uh, ah, yeah, pretty neat. Um, yeah, um, I think I seem to recall. I think, uh, I I seem to recall you're having some substance abuse problem. You're talking to me about that. And I quit. I quit everything. So, seven, sixteen, seventeen years ago. Uh, oh, everything. Great. Except tea. Preservation. Huh? Tea and chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's uh, me. I I dropped everything in uh, December eighteenth, nineteen eighty-eight. It was the last time I did. Any alcohol or drugs? Yeah. You were doing some heavy drugs. You were doing some heavy drugs. Yeah. Right. I, I, I was indeed. Yeah. That's what I remember. Off, off and on. Off and on. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, I was yeah. I was around that some, especially because of being around the music world. Uh, and, but uh, that... Uh, that one, you know, I didn't, I never, uh, it was never a major problem or anything. Uh, I did, I had more, you know, I, I liked pot, but sometimes I would smoke too much pot. And sometimes I would say, God, I'm smoking too much pot. And that, you know, I had to make an effort to like back away, you know, it was like, uh, but, but, Alcohol was when I really had to quit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have a genetic weakness for that. Uh huh. For drugs, particularly more than alcohol. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's one problem that I don't have to deal with. Yeah. Myself, anyway. Yeah. I, well, I'm I'm surrounded by, uh, you know. Uh, People in recovery. I I uh, I never uh, entered a, a program or anything. I just quit. But I was I was living with. But I say I was living with my sponsor, my wife. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, that's pretty good. Right, right, right at hand. Yeah, and uh, she says, "Well, you know, you have you have your spiritual." Uh, practice and, and you know she'll tell me because uh, she's very involved in all that here which is great um uh most of our friends here are you know program people or quite a few of them really most uh, i'd say most yeah by far most yeah huh. and um yeah and recovery programs here i mean people come here for that you know people really? people uh uh, people with money come here for that. Yeah, right. Um, and and there's free stuff here too. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad about that. Uh, but the the hardest thing to quit is tobacco. God, it seemed to me. Really? 
Now I n- never had a predilection to for that. it. Oh, although the so last still- time I quit tobacco, it was totally. In fact, the la- the last time I quit everything, it was totally effortless. It just fell away one 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 by one. It was I I, I think yeah. I programmed myself my subconscious and it just took care of it or something. Just Yeah. You know, just stop. Yeah. I didn't I didn't make any effort. It just stopped. Yeah. With my um second wife the night we finally split up, I stopped everything and I hadn't sat for fifteen years. Well, you got to take a break sometimes. <laughs> the marriage, I just stopped sitting, and then I, uh, I stopped all the drugs and alcohol, and then I started sitting again and uh, every day, and ah. been doing that since. Yeah. I try to sit three times. A, try to sit three times a day, just half hour sittings. Good Lord, that is real dedication. I am so impressed. That is good. And you know what? I have been surprised because I'm doing a lot of podcasts now. I've been doing them since April, uh, and I have one Zen, one guest in the Zen realm every week. Uh, and uh, and uh, I was I was way behind schedule this week because of having to get those books, uh, go over those books, yeah. and then the the inauguration, which. <laughs> the inauguration, I don't think, took a, a lot of time because I, I watched way more than I needed to, you know, to know what was happening. But um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with the number of people who uh, passed through uh, the Zen Center uh, are, you know, involved in practice in the 60s who are still at it, you know. In, yeah. in one way yeah. or another, a lot of people just sitting, have regular sitting practice. Uh, I'm very impressed. Uh, yeah. I, I know monks, I know monks who don't, plenty of monks that don't, are, are, don't do that, you know. Well, they're, <laughs> they're blessed at something, uh, but they continue the Zen practice history of me then then I started uh, in 88 I started going to uh, Green Gulch on Sunday lecture and then uh-huh. sitting with Steve and I sat with Steve Stucky's group for about 10 years uh, with his I saw you there I saw you there yeah. That's right. It was at Steve's house, the one on Bay Street in the center of Fell. Yeah. Oh, because you were living right near there. Yeah, I was living two blocks from there. Uh, right. Oh, I used to go right. see him all the time. And that's when I was just starting to to uh, do the archiving of Suzuki Roshi lectures and collecting them and this and that. And back then, you know, it was just starting with transcripts and, um, and then uh, floppy disks. And I would, Steve, you know, I'd come go talk to him and, you know, fill him out on everything that was happening and I'd share the materials with him. And so he saw the whole evolution of what I was doing. And when he became Abbott, he called me up right away and said, Zen Center should support what you're doing. And I said, that won't work, Steve, you know, uh, but we did something for half a year, and then he finally agreed with me. It was just going against the grain of Zen Center, and and didn't work. You know, it just automatically comes into wanting to control me. Not saying he did, but it's just the nature of institutions. And um, what really works is being totally independent. And the key with relating to Zen Center, I always say, is up with anything is to give and not to want to take. Uh, but yeah. anyway, anyway, uh, uh, I, I love Steve. Um, I greatly distressed uh, that he departed this realm. 
That was yeah, a, it doesn't make doesn't make any sense. No, that was well, I was mean, tragic. Suzuki Roshi should Suzuki Roshi should have should have could have lived another another twenty years, but he didn't. Yeah. Steve could have gone on for another twenty years, and, and Steve helped a lot of people. Uh, there was something about I don't think Steve ever, though he never indicated as such. I don't think Steve ever liked me <laughs> very much. For some you know, reason. Wait a minute. Wait anyway, a minute. It, Did you just say you don't think he liked you? Right. I don't think he was. He was. He was really too happy with me. I don't, I don't know. But he never expressed that. Never. Steve was very contained within Steve. There was yeah. a, a Steve on the out, outside and then there was a Steve on the inside. But his outside was so good and so I was so happy when he became Abbott. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I was r- really, really happy and wished him well. But anyway, from Steve's Impetus in that group, anyway. I started going out to Green Gulch and doing the Rohatsus. So ah. I did Rohatsus for about 10 years. And then the last Rohatsu I sat was 2010 with Linda uh-huh. and uh, Dokusan with Linda. Ah. And I'd been having SAD pretty badly. Wait a minute. Seasonal affective disorder. Oh, you mean we're like you get depressed when it gets dark? It get you get like I remember walking out of the Vendo at nine o'clock <laughs> to go sleep in my truck the way I was dead during uh, the shins, and it was like looking into hell. That's really? the feeling I had. Wow. Yeah, SAD is is really amazing. So I said to Linda, "Well, this is my." <laughs> last Rohatsu and she and she said yeah I, 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 I'm aware of what sad is she said I had a friend who had it so badly she moved to Hawaii it's seasonal what what's affective that affective disorder uh, seasonal yeah, affective disorder I, I know I have a friend with that who, who uh, uses like a sun lamp and, and a, a thing to reflect yeah. light on him and Right. That's what I, I got, and I've been using it every winter. It still comes every winter. It comes in November and, and usually lasts until March or something like well, that. Well, you ought to come here, man. You, you've got Social Security. You get your Social Security here. You can live here a lot cheaper than you can live in Berkeley. And uh, <laughs> uh, uh, right now it's rainy season, so there's, there's less sun, but uh, much less. Uh, but there's Overall, there's plenty of sun here. <laughs> you get a lot yeah. of vitamin D here, and you know, vitamin D is uh, 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 is uh, I think uh, pretty. It, it's uh, agreed that it, it's very good for you to have vitamin D in terms of COVID nineteen to keep your vitamin right. D up. That that's not every any fringe every day. thing, uh, and. And, uh, you know, uh, my wife says, well, why, you're not wearing your sunglasses. And I said, no, man, I'm going, I want to get all the vitamin D I, I can. You know, I, I don't, the sun doesn't tend to bother me. Uh, I don't burn easy or anything. Uh, yeah, it's kind of dark. Uh, but um, that, but I don't I don't sunbathe. I never lie out in the sun for fun. I get enough sun without trying. But um, anyway, uh, uh, if you if you decide you you want to go somewhere for it doesn't have to be here. There's plenty of good places. The people here are nice. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's sort of busy here. Uh, you know, there's too many people. Uh, too many, <laughs> not this year, but in general, too many tourists, and and they build, they overbuild everything. You know, everybody think uh, they build too many restaurants, too many hotels, too many homestays. Everything they just they, they want to fill everything oh, in. Yeah. 
<laughs> Get that money. Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of corrupting. Yeah, I always say that uh, money makes people poor, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, exactly. But once, look, once, you know that thing, you can't, you, you can't, once they've left the farm and seen the city, they don't want to go back. I mean, it's true with me. Uh, but, yeah. uh, um, you know, in a way, uh, it's a problem. It's um, it's closely related to the fact that we're committing suicide with climate change. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I think it's, it's probably built in, built in uh, uh, somehow. Humans have got to completely wipe themselves out, and then the planet, after you know, half a million years or so, will gradually get back on track. <laughs> Um, we but the humans have to go. It's too bad. Yeah, uh, I don't. Doesn't look like they're going to get enough fence together. That's, I mean, there's plastic, plastic, microplastics everywhere. Yeah, we don't. We don't even know what they're with really what they're doing. And yeah. they'll never get the plastic manufacturer to stop. Look how long it took them to stop. Get the tobacco people to even slow down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, you, you you remember who uh, Upton Sinclair was? Uh, yeah, uh, he was you know a socialist writer back in the uh, 30s and 40s. It, I think he ran for governor of California, right? And uh, I he, think so. He was very popular. In fact, he was going to win, but he'd written about 50 books, and the and the whole the it was like one of the very earliest, maybe the earliest beginning case of using uh, a sort of dirty tricks or, uh, uh, I don't, there, there's, I, I can't think of what to call it. Uh, a, a PR firm or something down in LA was hired by the opposition and they just took quotes out of his books, fictional books. You know, I hate America, Upton Sinclair, or whatever, you know. <laughs> and every yeah. day they were sounds, in the newspapers. Uh, and uh, uh, that beat him. But anyway, it, it uh, might not have been a good governor anyway, who knows. But uh, he said, it's a famous, it, I, I bet it's the thing he's quoted most. Something like, it, it's hard to convince somebody to uh, change their behavior when their income depends on it. Yeah, right. It is. Uh, I think that well, the story I remember about him, he wrote a book about the meatpacking industry and uh, what actually went on there. And the famous, famous scene of Teddy Roosevelt eating breakfast and reading the book. And he got to the part about the meatpacking thing and he opened the window and dumped his pork sausages out in the flower bed. Oh, is that right? I read that book when I was in high school. It's called The Jungle. Yeah, exactly. I think, well, I was, uh, I think the thing about Ted, the story about Teddy Roosevelt was uh, one that was told about that, but I guess there was no uh, government oversight at all about virtually any, anything. No, no, they would, people would break their arms and they'd just throw them out. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's always a, a struggle like that going on. Uh, yeah. Um, that, those those aren't our big problems. I mean, there's a lot of terrible things happening, but the big problem is what you said is that we don't seem to have the inclination to do what we need to do to stop. I'd say climate change primarily, and. Uh, uh, plastic pollution and, and other types of pollution are up yeah. there, but they're not yeah. necessary. Uh, they, they we can we can we we have a, a, a longer timeline to solve those problems and the ability to do it and you know develop new new types of materials which can take the place of plastics, which biodegrade and stuff. That 
all that technology is it's sort of there are being developed yeah, but the climate is. change thing is um yeah it is uh it doesn't look that then just but we don't seem to have any inclination to act as quick as we'd have to act to do something about that i just can't see it no they're still building building away there in miami beach <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that that doesn't matter. I mean, that, 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 I think I think uh, uh, it's the heat and the storms and stuff that the, the heat might might do us in before the you know. Then what about all the the power plants and everything? If civilization crumbles, all the nuclear waste and everything. Anyway, well, that's enough of all They've of that. They've never, never figured out what to do with the nuclear waste. God. Well, B Bill Gates has put serious thought into that. He's he's put big money in trying to develop methods to take nuclear waste and turn it into energy that has like water as a byproduct. And uh, he wanted uh, he he was he, he was just getting ready to build a a plant in. Uh, China, when when Trump made it impossible, right? Uh, but uh, anyway, have you ever seen the little book I did of vignettes about Suzuki Roshi? It, it was first. I'm not sure. It was first called to shine one corner of the world. Came out in 20 years ago, and and then it no. came out again. Uh, Shambhala called Zen is right here. Well, there's a sequel. It's just vignettes. It's a little book of vignettes, like 130, 127 vignettes. There's a sequel to it coming out this year in July. Oh, great! And and one of them, uh, it, I I quote Suzuki as saying, uh, you know, in the first place, when he came back from Japan, he's talking about. He, uh, the environmental degradation he'd seen there and it was very distressing to him. Uh, and then I take a quote from somewhere else and combine it with it. And he was saying, however, if the whole world ends, nothing has happened. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is bigger than one one planet. <laughs> yeah. Uh well, very it's, big. Yeah, and uh, you know, big mind he talked about is bigger than all phenomena. Um, yeah. And he said we were each of us. Or keep in mind, are the center of the universe. Uh, oh, so, great. So I don't know. I think it's good to keep some of this cosmic stuff in. Mine, you know, you know, if you look at it from a Hindu point of view, things are being created and destroyed all the time, and it's just that's the way things are. So, when when you're on the the uh, Brahma side or the uh, you know the Creator or the Vishnu side, the preserver, it all looks good. But if you happen to be on the on the uh, Shiva side, <laughs> you think, oh. Existence is very distressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I definitely go there sometimes, a lot lately. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I I I hope you don't suffer from SAD this winter. Uh, why don't you go down to Mexico, man? There, there's <laughs> there's safe places there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's. It's not that bad. Um, it's bad, but it's not that bad because it comes from a part of the brain where you actually have a little bit of leverage. There's a little space where you can actually see that it's SAD. It has a different feeling. And that's that's helped. That's huh. helped. Huh. 
Hmm. But it it is pervasive. It's, it's kind of like a, a fog, but you could recognize that that's the fog, even though you're in the fog and it's around you. You have a tiny bit of um, leverage. It helps. Ah, huh. well, that's that's interesting. Hmm. Well, uh, listen. I guess it's time. It's almost six, and that's my bedtime. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to be scolded by my wife. I know. Uh, but. Um, and this is not normal for me. Uh, hey, but I've really enjoyed talking with you. Um, we had a, a free, free ranging, free flowing, uh, I'll say, yeah. discussion of many things. Uh, and, um, uh, um, uh, it's good to hear you. You just sound just the same. You sound great. 79. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, it's always good to it's always good to talk to somebody and and uh, particularly somebody who's who's in the past and in the present and uh, <laughs> all those old times, all those old times that are that are um that are uh disappearing into the past. Yeah. Yeah. But well, they're still still in my head. Yeah, yeah, it's um, it's actually, it's all gone. It didn't even exist. What exists is these, these memories were just creating them. Uh, That's e exactly right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I wish, I wish it was that simple. Uh, yeah, say, what are you doing? What are you doing here? I don't need to think about that any again. Again, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you can't, can't push push it away though. You have to wave to it. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, it's it's um, it's uh, been good knowing you, Tim, <laughs> and um, uh, we should uh, stay in touch some. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, come visit. Yeah. Okay. Come here next winter, you know, when it's dark there. Winter here is, uh, well, you do want to come in the rainy season. I mean, I like, I love the rainy season. It's my favorite. Because uh, I feel, it makes me feel cozy when I'm working. and I work a lot. Uh, but um, a good time to come is... Uh, you know, like April, that's really good. Uh, yeah, yeah, and it met Jim, Mar March is good. March is good. If you get into the summer, it gets expensive. The flights. Uh, yeah, well, be able to be able to fly again pretty soon. Yeah, Thanks. they're not letting anybody really in now. They're not letting anybody. No. In. It's even hard to come no. in from other islands in Indonesia. Uh, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're, they're not like America. America's crazy. It's got all these people fighting each other. Uh, and uh, they're pretty cooperative here. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, it's been great, David. I really enjoy it. Um, I'll look for your book when it comes out. Uh, then yes, it sounds um, interesting. Well, you know, I read the other one. Oh, you've seen the other one? Yeah. Uh, well, I've read. No, I haven't seen. No, I mean uh, the main book. Oh, you mean Crooked, Crooked Cucumber? cucumber. Crooked Cucumber. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's really great that someone has. Put it together. Um, I, I I read the whole thing, and in and, and updated, corrected, you know, like second edition version into podcast this year. The whole thing is podcast, oh, yeah? yeah, and uh, uh, with comments, 
uh, extensive comments. <laughs> and um, yeah, I did that from April through September. Once a week, I'd read a chapter. And, and now I'm reading, uh, once a week, I'm reading uh, pieces uh, from a work in progress called Tassahara Stories. Uh, huh. And um, uh, so I'm going to try to get a second edition of Tassahara, of Crooked Cucumber done. We'll see. Um, uh you know, I don't know if they'll be interested or not. Anyway, bedtime. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you deserve it now. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was Thank great. You. Thanks, David. Thanks a lot. Call me again. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Take care, and thanks for, for I learned some things there. That was good. Well, <laughs> It, it feels so good to tell those stories to someone who understands. Yeah, and uh, also congratulations <laughs> on your um, just your your uh, how you're living. You know, uh, not not everybody. Uh, you know, not everybody uh, makes the choices you've made, and you know, uh, so that's good. Uh, yeah, you're you're headed to glory, Tim. <laughs> well, I I think that uh, uh, Zen Zen practice, Zen Center influence, and sitting all of the for me anyway, which is very minor. This all those rahatsus, it it really was the right time. Yeah. it really gives me some real order order yeah in my life yeah 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 very good very good okay take care okay thanks okay. a lot okay david see you later yeah bye bye, bye, -bye. So, hey, thanks a lot, Tim Ford. Uh, you know, look at his name, Tim Ford, seven letters. Don't you envy that? And that's sort of how I see Tim. He's uh, he's sort of uncomplicated in a way. He's, uh, he's just um, down-to-earth, real person. Ha, 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 ha. And the rest of us <laughs> are are just a bunch of emptiness. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, that was great talking to him. Uh, yeah, I got a great job, huh? So, uh, oh, I want to say one thing. That remember when he was talking about the uh, Zen Center conference? Uh, well, it was the it was a conference of that Suzuki Roshi conference at Stanford. A bunch of us went to it in 1999. Um, and I said, yeah, that was put on by Stanford. And what's that group? Gil Ronsdale had, yeah, it's the Sati. Uh, it's these, I think it's the Sati Center for Buddhist Studies. And it's still going. And I have a ton about it on QQ. Dot com, C U K E dot com. Just write uh, Sati, S A T I, conference in the site search box and it'll go to it. It's the Stanford Sati conference on Shunyu Suzuki. Uh, and hey, something else. Uh, the, if you write Tim Ford in the site search box, you can go to his page and that'll link you to an interview I did with him. 25 and a half years ago <laughs> in 1995 you might give it a little time before you go there though because uh, I've written him some questions uh, and uh, I'll be adding a little to that page
And uh, he says some neat things in it. Uh, and it's not real long. Uh, and uh, your friend still has, a, you know, like a, a, Zen, a Zen Vipassana group uh, at um, down in mm, Woodside. Uh, so uh, is there anything else I should add? Let me check my notes. Nope. That's it. So, this has been a Cute Audio podcast. I'm DC Puba of Cute Audio and Cute Archives, coming to you from Sleepy Sanur with Dog at Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear, lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you, and yours, and all of us, a grand awakening. Thank you.